Excellent. Hallelujah. Thank you. Absolutely. I tested the mics for you. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so Colin and Nicola are away on furlough until uh, Thursday morning, Thursday. Um, and um, as you will see, because it is half term, we've got a very um, reduced program for the week, for the week to come. But on Thursday, just to keep um, a few dates in your diaries, on Thursday we have got a Jubilee uh, coffee morning that is taking place here between 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock. And I had a special mention from Lillian. Anyone who's promised or agreed to do a cake, please don't forget to bring the said cake on Thursday. That would be really helpful. She, she's sorry she can't be here today, but she's, she just asked me for that special mention, so I have done it. You will see uh, leaflets if you want to leave those around to the places where you go just to um, advertise the Jubilee Coffee Morning. That would be absolutely wonderful. Next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, and um, um, Colin and Nicola will be leading our worship, and our band will take part uh, at 12 o'clock in the uh, Falklands uh, 40th anniversary service at Page Park, so if you would like to support the band as they are doing so, uh, you can do that after our service here at 12 o'clock. Core Family News, you will have read if you've got the weekly bulletin that uh, Ruth Shepherd was promoted to glory on Wednesday. And um, we think of her husband, Francis, at this time, and particularly her son as well. There's a lot of congratulations um, around. And first of all, it's to Peter and Valerie Scott, who are members of our core, who are celebrating their golden wedding anniversary on the 3rd of June, which happens to be the Jubilee Day as well. Sheila Farrell, who has been entertaining us online for the quizzes for the band, we will remember Sheila particularly over the, the, uh, the lockdown. Uh, Sheila, he's uh, getting ready for the marriage of her son, Seb, to Fran, that is taking place this week. So if you know Sheila, uh, do uh, wish her well. And something that I didn't know, but then there are many things that I don't know, is that our CEOs, our core officers, celebrated their 25th or completed their 25th um, anniversary as, uh, or year as um, officers. Um, so it's another milestone. We are privileged here at Staple Health Salvation Army to have so many people who are actually able to lead us into worship when actually our leaders are, are away. And this morning, we are very privileged, and, and it's my pleasure to uh, welcome uh, Kelvin and Linda to the platform as they will be leading us to worship. Um, I would like to thank you in advance for all of your prep. Um, everyone will have been blown away already and I'm really looking forward to what you will have to bring to us. So can I ask you please to just welcome Kelvin and Linda as they lead us to worship. Right, for those of you that have seen the bulletin, I'm just going to bring that down a bit. Yeah, I could do it but... Right, can I say, um, for those of you with children, I've sorted some um, crafts and challenges activities at the back of the hall. So please feel free to do that throughout the meeting. Um, it's sort of self-explanatory, but Margaret's there just to make sure you're on the right track. And um, I'll look forward to seeing what you've done at the end of the meeting. In Hebrews it reads, Hebrews chapter 10, and it's entitled, Help Others Each Other Be Strong. We should think about each other to see how we can encourage each other to show love and do good works. We must not quit meeting together, as some are doing. No, we need to keep on encouraging each other. This becomes more and more important as you see the day of Christ's return getting closer. And as you can probably see, this morning's meeting is based around the word challenge. We can all have different challenges in life, but it's how we overcome the challenge that is our thought today. The writer to the Hebrew church, as I've just read, tells us to encourage each other and to continue on our journey with Christ and not stop meeting together. We have a truth that we are called to tell the world. We have been challenged to tell others so they too may believe. But many of us find that it's difficult to fulfill this challenge. However, my thinking this morning is 
It is how we accept this challenge and work it out in our lives that helps us to become a better person. And God uses that time of reflection to help us build a relationship with him and become closer to the person that he wants us to be. Our first song this morning is song 857. And it's going to make, I'm going to make my life into a melody. And I'm sure you all will. Would you like to stand, please? for a good sing. For those young people that have just arrived, there's a table set over in the corner, all for you to do lots of activities. Okay? Right, we're going to sing together now a prayer chorus. And this is really why we're here, to be in his presence with our fellow believers and to sit at his feet. It's song... Song 345 in the songbook.
And as we rest in his presence, shall we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the amazing blessings that you give us each day. We think of everything that has happened during this last week, and we thank you for your presence with us. We thank you, Lord, that everything we need is found in you, and you always are there to hear our needs and provide for us. We pray for our family and friends, and pray that we have shown you in everything that we have said and done. There are those of us here who may be feeling sad, weak, or with burdens that no other may know of. We pray that you will bring joy, strength, rest, and restoration. We bring to you those of our church family who are unwell at this time, or currently in hospital. May you bring them healing and help those who are caring for them. We bring you those who have been bereaved over recent months. May they be aware of your support and comfort them continually. We particularly bring to you Francis and his son David and family who have been bereaved of Ruth during this last week. We think of those who are suffering in areas of conflict, particularly those in the east of Europe. But we know there are other areas in the world where there is war and other forms of deprivation. May they be aware of your presence. May peace and reconciliation soon be brought to the people. Lord, we bring to you the area of Staple Hill and pray for our community. May you bring a sense of love and friendship to those who may be lonely and afraid or going through times of financial difficulty. May they know that there is support and help from people and our core family who care about them and their situation. We pray for this meeting today, Lord, that you will help us to hear what you have to say to us. And although we have heard your word many times before, may today be the time when we hear it with a fresh meaning. All these things we ask in the precious name of your son, Jesus, who taught us how to pray. And shall we say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. <coughs> right, now we're going to have the message from the songsters, which is a bit of excitement, because really, because I thought the songsters weren't going to sing because there were so many people missing, but great that they're here. And they're going to sing Under His Wings.
that was great. Lovely. Well done. I'm sure most of you were able to sort of sing along with that as well. Um, the, the thought about challenge um, has been on my mind for a little while, probably about four or five months. Um, and in extra slice groups, um, the people were talking about uh, challenges, and I said to the ch I challenged them to see if they could write their testimony between 100 and 150 words. Now, if you try and write that, it's difficult because you've got to choose your words very carefully, and it's a it's a challenge. And this morning, um, Marion and Rita are going to share their testimonies with us. Um, they're not going to come to the platform. We're going to take the mic to them. <coughs> oh, right. So Marion's going to start off, and then Rita will join her after. So if I can get this right, as a result of a fall, my mum's femur was shattered necessitated extensive use of metal work to stabilize the fractures. Mum had severe osteoporosis, and a few months later, the bone crumbled away from the metal work, demanding more complicated surgery, brightening. Fairly soon after this, Mum's thigh became extremely inflamed, and she was very unwell. Exploratory surgery was needed the consultant who had operated previously was on holiday, and no one else was willing to do this. It was a desperate situation for the whole family. That Sunday morning, my church prayed for Mum, that a surgeon with the necessary expertise would be willing to operate. They had received a call from the hospital at dinner time on Sunday. Mum's consultant Although still on holiday, had been to see Mum and was assembling his team to operate that afternoon. Certainly, with no doubt, this was an answer to prayer. Thank you. Born into the home of preserved parents, I was taken to the army from two weeks old and went through all the stages of army life. There came a time, however, when I had to make a decision for myself and say to God, I'm in your hands. Show me what you want me to do with my life. He has led me in many ways, not always the way I would have liked, but when I look back, there was always a reason for his leaving. Over the past 12 months, I have questioned God and asked why I should be going through this difficult time. There have been days when I've been very low, but a song kept coming to me, number 13 in the songbook. He giveth more grace as our burdens grow greater. What wonderful words to hold on to. The song speaks of God giving his love to us over and over again. The second verse speaks of even when we get to the end of our holy resources, the Father's full giving has only begun. I like the last verse where it speaks of God's love having no limits because of his infinite riches in Jesus, he giveth and giveth and giveth again. That has been very true for me over the past months, and I pray that I may always hold on to these words. Thank you to you both very much. Thank you. And I challenge each one of you here today to go home and think about what God's done for you and see if you can put it in a little testimony between 100 and 150 words. It's a challenge. When we were in Birmingham, many years ago now, we used to sing a song, and we have sang it here with the songsters, and it says, when we cannot see our way. And I think that may have been a song for Jonah if, he did, if it had been around when he, was, when he was there, you know, many years ago. It's number 689 in the songbook, and it, I'm not going to sing it, but I'll just read. It says, when we cannot see our way, let us trust and still obey. He who bids us forward go cannot fail the way to show. Though the sea be deep and wide, 
Though a passage seem denied, fearless let us still proceed, since the Lord vouchsafes to lead. And though it be the gloom of night, though we see no ray of light, since the Lord himself is there, tis not meet that we should fear. But, fifth verse says, be it ours then while we're here, him to follow without fear, where he calls us, there to go, what he bids us, that to do. Now I've been singing that song to myself over the last few weeks when I've been thinking about the meeting. And somewhere in my memory, I must have had this other song. And it, I was singing, so sort I of went from one song to the others, and it says, I have a saviour who guides me every day. Now, I found out they're not quite the right words, but to me, I always make my words up anyway, so it doesn't really matter. But Kelvin tells me that the words are, I have a pilot who guides me. So I had to Google the chorus to find out what it says. And it says, I have a pilot who guides me night and day. Through cloud and sunshine, I trust him, come what may. Dangers may threaten, but I never fear, because I'm full of confidence while he is near. I have a pilot who guides me a long life's way. And another song with a similar sort of thought is song 273 in our songbook, and it's called Saviour Lead Me Lest I Stray. And we're going to sing that as a big songster brigade this morning, and Michael's going to play the songster accompaniment. Now, can I just tell you, I did look at the right, right tune to sing for this song, but I didn't know it. And I thought, it's a bit of a dirge, so we're singing the nice tune. And Michael's going to help us. So we're sitting on, we're sit, they remain seated, and it's Saviour, lead me lest I stray.
Thank you for that. Thank you for Michael. Now, Jerry's going to share her testimony with us. Morning. Well, who would have thought life could change so quickly? We think we have life planned out for our future, but it can all be changed in a moment. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 tells us, God has plans for us to prosper and not to harm us. There came a moment in my life when Malcolm passed away, so suddenly after doing so well, when I questioned this, I felt sad, lost and very alone. Oh my, did I have to dig in and I had to dig in deep and I still do. We were both given a verse when he became uh, unwell and when he hurt his leg by someone here and she'll know who that is. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hebrews 13 verse 5 with a message above it. However long your journey, God is beside you all the way. I believed that this was just for the journey we had due to Malcolm's illness, but now I know it was for me too on this journey of grief. No matter how lost, sad, or alone I feel and wonder what God's got planned for me, I know and believe God will be with me all the way. I thank him that he has proved to be not just a faithful God, but my faithful God. Aren't we encouraged by people speaking out? Lovely words of testimony. We need to encourage each other. We need to tell each other what God's doing in our lives so that they too can be encouraged. We're going to sing a song together, all of us, as a testimony. And it's song 483 in the songbook. When I was lost, you came and rescued me. And we're going to stand and take up the offering at the same time.
and a prayer. Some of you might have wondered why I've got a picture of Jonah here. I haven't spoken about Jonah yet, but um, most of us will know the story of Jonah. Jonah and the big fish, or Jonah and the whale. But whether this is your first or hundredth time hearing the story about Jonah, God has always something he wants us to teach us from his word. So we're going to listen to the story today as if it was the first time you'd ever heard it so we can learn the lesson that God wants to teach us. And Laura and Neil are coming to read the Bible to us. The Bible reading this morning is taken from the book of Jonah, and it's the whole of chapter one. Jonah flees from the Lord. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa, where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard and sailed for Tarshish to flee from the Lord. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. All the sailors were afraid, and each cried out to his own God, and they threw the cargo into the sea to lighten the ship. But Jonah had gone below deck where he lay down and fell into a deep sleep. The captain went to him and said, How can you sleep? Get up and call on your God. Maybe he will take notice of us so that we will not perish. Then the sailors said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. So they asked him, Tell us, Who is responsible for making all of this trouble for us? What kind of work do you do? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? He he told them, I am a Hebrew. I worship God, the God of heaven who made the sea and land. At that, the men were frightened, really frightened, and said, what on earth have you done? As Jonah talked, the sailors realised that he was running away from God. They said to him, What are we going to do with you to get rid of this storm? By this time the sea was wild, totally out of control. Jonah said, Throw me overboard into the sea. Then the storm will stop. It's all my fault. I'm the cause of the storm. Get rid of me and you'll get rid of the storm. But no, the men tried rowing back to shore. They made no headway. The storm only got worse and worse, wild and raging. Then they prayed to God, O God, don't let us drown because of this man's life, and don't blame us for his death. You are God. Do what you think is best. They took Jonah and threw him overboard, Immediately, the sea was quieted down. The sailors were impressed, no longer terrified by the sea, but in awe of God. They worshipped God, offered a sacrifice, and made vows. Then God assigned a huge fish to swallow Jonah. Jonah was in the fish's belly for three days and nights. Amen. The story of Jonah is very well known but mainly for him being swallowed by the big fish. But as we have heard this morning, it all began with a request from God to Jonah, him being disobedient and rejecting the challenge. We don't know how Jonah received the request from God, whether it was a spoken word from God 
in a dream or a vision, writing on the wall or through another prophet. But we do know Jonah was not happy with this assignment God had given him. God asked him to go and preach to the people of Nineveh and tell them to repent of their bad ways. He did not like the Ninevites because they were Assyrians and he wanted them to be punished for all the hurtful things they had done to the Israelites over the years. Jonah chose to disobey God's instructions, but even worse than not doing anything, he went in, in the completely opposite direction that he was told to go. If Jonah would have obeyed God immediately, his trip to Nineveh would only be 550 miles. Instead, he went to Joppa and found a boat that was heading to Tarshish, located two and a half thousand miles away. On board ship, these sailors were minding their own business, doing what they normally do by sailing from Joppa to Tarshish, carrying people and cargo that were being shipped from one port to another. They hadn't gone far before the storm began. Jonah's sin of disobedience caused the sailors' lives to be endangered. They were so afraid the ship would sink, they all began to cry out to the different gods they worshipped. They also began to throw packages overboard to help the ship not sink. Jonah's disobedience caused him to be self-centred and insensitive to the needs of those around him. We need to ensure that we are never insensitive to those around us. We need to be alert to others' needs and aware of what is going on in the area that we find ourselves. Jonah goes for a rest and sleeps below deck whilst the sailors struggle to keep control of the ship. The sailors wanted to know who was responsible for the danger they were in. They cast lots to find out who was responsible. Casting lots is like flipping a coin and the person who says heads gets to go first. It also could be like putting names in a hat and the name that is drawn first is the person responsible. When the sailors cast lots, they realised it was Jonah's fault that they were suffering this terrible storm. They asked Jonah who he was and where he came from. He states his identity and who he believes in, in verse 9. Is that something we can learn from, Jonah, even when we are going through trials and storms of life? We should not disown our Lord and who we believe in. Jonah takes responsibility for his disobedience. In verse 12, the sailors were frightened, and as the storm gets worse, they asked Jonah what they should do to make the sea calm down. Jonah tells them to throw him overboard so that the sea would be calmed. When in the big fish he prayed to God, he prayed for three days for the situation he was in, and finally he was delivered. We need this type of faith, storm or no storm. We need to believe that God hears our prayers and will answer us according to the way he thinks is best for us. What we need to consider is there was nothing really wrong about going to Joppa. But it was just not God's plan for Jonah. Jonah's challenge was that God told him to go to Nineveh. He wasn't asked to send a note to the people or announce it publicly that the nation would be destroyed if they didn't change their ways. He was told to get up and move himself there, to travel onto an environment that was not in his comfort zone. He couldn't just stay where he was. He had to move. When Jonah finally listened to God, his obedience saved a nation. If he had persisted in ignoring God's commission, a whole nation would have perished for lack of knowledge. We need to understand that what God asks of us almost certainly is not for our benefit. Our obedience to God is so important, if not for ourselves, but for the benefit of others. Now we're always blessed by Michael's uh, contribution to our worship each week. Um, Michael's going to play uh, a medley of tunes on the piano for us now. In the absence of a microphone, <coughs> I've been told to shout. <laughs> <coughs> Apologies, you can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, so you'll see that um, this one's uh, been entitled Three Responses. Uh, the first, so it's three tunes, no surprise. Um, the first one reflects Jonah's response that we've just been hearing about. He disobeyed a very foolish notion. Uh, the second uh, piece goes on to, uh, to reflect Isaiah's response, which you can read in Isaiah chapter 6 when he met with the Lord, and the Lord gave him a challenge. He was a bit anxious. He said, who am I to do what you want me to do? And yet he said, here am I, send me. So that's the second tune. The third one challenges me and you, I guess, to consider our response. What is it that we respond when God gives us a, a challenge? Um, it's, a, it's an old songster song that some of you may know, some of you may not know, which is why I've asked for the words to be put up on the screen. It says, I must have the Saviour with me, for I dare not walk alone. Uh, and uh, in, in the end, in the chorus, it says, I will go without a murmur, and his footsteps follow still. This is three responses.
Thank you, Michael. That was beautiful and a challenge. I don't know about you, but I love a quiz program. I do think it must be a popular genre of TV program because there are so many. Pointless, The Chase, Chipping Point, Tipping Point, egg, Eggheads, <laughs> Richard Osman has the games, University Challenge, to name just a few. But one of my favourites is Only Connect. I actually very rarely get any of the answers, but I love to watch it and I'm amazed at the knowledge and the randomness of the answers. A recent addition to these puzzles are the ones found on your phone or your iPad. Nicola referred to one of these the other day, well, actually a couple of months ago. It was Wordle, when you have six chances to get the word of the day, and if it's coloured yellow, it's the right letter in the wrong place. Or and if it's green, it's the correct letter in the right place. It works on a similar method to the old mastermind game that you play with coloured pegs. On the same lines as Wordle is Nerdle, when you have to write the correct number sentence, more difficult than you think. And other quizzes have, have followed but they're far too difficult for me. But what I do attempt is global, when you have to guess the country of the world that day. The nearer you get to the country, the darker the colour is. There's no limit on how many guesses you can have. And I'm not great at geography, so I often have to get the map out and have a look at the countries that are close by to find the, the country that is close. So, while I'm researching, I'm learning bit by bit. Some of you might remember the old TV program called Canic, I can't say the words now, Challenge Annika with Annika Rice. Well, I saw her on the telly this week, and 30 years on, she's coming back to do some challenges set by the public, just as she did before. But she wasn't the only person invo involved in achieving the tasks. She, assisted, she instigated it and then called upon others to help around. Challenges like this have always been around. There have always been games and challenges that people have enjoyed. But God sets us challenges too. We may not always know how to deal with it or even know the correct answer. But whilst we contemplate, God talks to us. He gives us opportunity to work things out, research how to proceed, and learn from our ponderings. Sometimes he talks to us and shows us how to work things out whilst we're quiet. God set Jonah a challenge and he ran away from God. We read that while he was running, well, on the board, on board ship sleeping, the other sailors had gone to their own gods and were calling out to them to help for help. Perhaps sometimes we can learn from those around us who have no belief in God. Maybe sometimes God uses those people to help us and teach us in situations. One morning this last week, I woke up and said to Kelvin, cool, I feel as if I've been in the belly of the whale last night. God was talking to me about the meeting today, and I was pondering over lots of things in the dark and thinking about the plan, what was included, how things would pan out, and I knew that many would be away because it was school half-term holidays. And next week, everything else is going on for the Platinum Jubilee. Everyone's getting excited. But whilst I thought and pondered, I was reassured that it was all in God's hands and would be fine. Because what was being prepared was for someone who would be here today or would be able to watch it online later. For those of our congregation who are slightly more mature in years, 
You'll remember the series and also the films Mission Impossible. Apparently, there's a new Mission Impossible film coming out soon. One of the questions was uh, one of the questions asked was posed as a challenge. Your mission, should you choose, decide to accept it, is. And the final part of the instruction stated, this tape will self-destruct in 10 seconds. Jesus' challenge to us does not self-destruct, however. His challenge is continuous. Even if we're like Jonah and refuse the request given to us, we are still allowed to accept the challenge when we feel and know that we should. We cannot escape his calling, even if we run in the completely opposite direction. Whilst Jonah was in the big fish, he prayed to God. Whilst we were in dark times, in difficult situations, we too need to pray earnestly to God, and maybe he will show himself to us and show us the way to work things out. While we take time to listen to him, he can reveal himself to us and show us the correct way to proceed. Some of the challenges that we must live with daily is, are things like illness, disability, bereavement, just to name a few. However, this does not free us from the challenge God gives us to follow him. And then he, through Jesus, sets us the challenge to go out and tell others about the gospel the good news. God can challenge us in many ways. Our challenges may vary as we go through life, but the most important challenge that we must first achieve is to believe in Jesus Christ. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 23, it says, this is his commandment, that we believe in the name of his son Jesus Christ and love one another just as he commanded us. Once a person believes in Jesus Christ, the challenge continues. Then God asks us to demonstrate our obedience to him, carrying out his will for our lives. And it says in Matthew, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. It can be challenging at times to follow after the call of God. There are many obstacles and trials we need to overcome along the way. And as we go through God's life, and as we go through life, sorry, God uses those times of study, prayer, exercise groups, and contemplation to show us how to grow and learn his will. Of course, God does amazing things and we should prayerfully anticipate God's blessings as we pursue his call. But we also need to be prepared to embrace tough seasons. We are encouraged to rely on Christ's strength. We are encouraged to develop our trust in God. And we've heard this morning testimonies of God calling people so clearly. And that is wonderful, and we celebrate those stories. But at times it can feel leave us leaving feel inadequate or unsure if the path is the right path we're meant to, to take. When we look at the people in the Bible, you will notice they all had different starting points. Moses was in the outback. Joshua began his journey in a tent. David was in the fields minding his dad's sheep. Elisha was working on his dad's farm with oxen. Isaiah had an opened eye vision of heaven. Daniel was a prisoner of war. Peter was fishing and Paul was out and about causing trouble for people. All these people were called during the ordinary daily routines of life and they were called to follow God without knowing the end outcome or how it was actually going to play out in their lives. Overcoming this challenge, we can be 
courage to remember that it doesn't matter how we start, it matters that we get going. Look at, God, look at where God has put you today. Cherish the friends and contacts and opportunities that you already have. Explore what mission you live out in the places you know best and among the people you know. If you're busy at work, think about the opportunities that you have to make your workplace a more desirable place. And as Colin and Nicola have often said to us, tell your colleagues what you've been up to on a Sunday. If you're busy with young children at home, how can you witness to your friends the compassion and love of God? Maybe you could offer support to another parent who's struggling. And if you spend more time at home, invite your neighbour in for a coffee. Get to know them. Wherever you are, the important thing is to start from there. What we need to remember is that none of us are perfect but we can all strive to be the best that we can. We need to remember we don't need to tell others about him. It's not for our benefit, but for those who don't know his love. A song that's been going over my head whilst thinking of the character of Jonah is one that's sung by the songsters, Christ Calls. And this is what the words read. I'll just read the first verse. It says... Christ calls each one of us to follow, to be his body in the world, to build his church today, tomorrow, love's banner flying high, unfurled. I want to be the hands of Jesus, my hands his deep compassion show. I want to be the feet of Jesus, as to a needy world I go. And I like this bit, I gladly, give my all to Jesus. I gladly give my all to Jesus. Through me, redeeming love must flow. It's important to remember that it's ordinary people who get things started. So many of the best initiatives that have emerged from humble beginnings is where one or two people get together to start something to make the world a better place. Over the last couple of months, whilst thinking about this theme, I've thought about the word challenge and I've, I've composed a, an acrostic to guide us in how to accept the challenge and remember what God can say to us today. So you're now going to be given a piece of paper I'm hoping there's going to be enough. <laughs> They're all the same, just different colours. Now this is going to be a trial. This is my challenge for the morning. How to make this work. <laughs> but I'm accepting the challenge, Aidan. <laughs> Peter Wee's one, Kelvin. Right, so. C. Christ calls each one of us to follow. H. His word has been inspired and written down for thousands of years. A. Ask questions. It's important to ask questions to those who can help, but we must be ready too for all those questions who 
all those who may ask us questions. So that's a challenge for each one of us. L, love. Remember, he loves us whatever, but we give him pleasure by living an obedient life. L, listen to him and learn from others. E, expectations. Expect joy. Be excited. Be empowered. N, never forget you are never alone and he is always near. G, give thanks for blessing daily. And E, encourage each other by telling people what we know about God is doing in our lives. And finally, remember that everyone is included. He is a saviour for the whosoever for the world. I'd like you to take that home, put it in your Bible, or you put it on the side, and just remind you of what God's challenge is for you each day. We're going to sing a song together now. And it reminds us of why we have this challenge. It's not for our benefit, it's for the people out there. Number song 418. People need the Lord.
final song to sing together. We're going to stand and we're going to sing, Let us go out into the world with love in our hearts. Because that's what the world needs. It needs love. Shall we stand? Old song is song 925. <laughs> Shall we pray? Dear Lord Jesus, we do thank you that we've been able to meet here today in your name. We pray that as we've thought about your word and heard what you have to say to each one of us, that we will go out into this world with Christ in our lives, in our hearts, and that people will see your love shining through everything that we do and everything that we say. Amen.